painting Angeron for the Golden Demon, part two. Continuing along on this multi-part series on how I would create an entry for a painting competition such as the Golden Demon, we're working on Angron again. I want to break this down in a very concise and detailed fashion. Leave no stone unturned. So we have a lot of painting to do. Well, I do. Sit back, maybe paint along, but anyways, let's get into it. In the beginning! A base coat of flat earth to cover the ground. I hit the metals with some gun metal. And I'll also be blocking in the sentinel with a coat of German uniform. On those downward facing angles, I'll add a touch of dark Prussian blue and black to create some shadows. Just real quick and rough so far, but there are some definite depths that I know I'll want established and be able to blend on top of in the future. Now, with some groundwork established, it's time to slice the pie. And I like a heap and helpin'. The Sentinel has a lot of fun geometry to paint on. Mainly, I'll be brightening the upward angles and focusing a spotlight beneath Angron's hooves. The colors will be the same, with the addition of buff to German uniform to brighten. The ground mounds will receive a rendering, blending German camel black-brown and flat earth together. A textured surface is a great way to begin wet blending. That texture will help to hold your paint in place. And I like the control. Now with everything roughly established, before adding to the highlights onto, in Imperial Guard terms, dip into the trenches. Taking a fine brush and some black combined with German uniform, lay some lines into the crevices, just panel lining everything out, just a... Uh, most of these seams need some attention. We want to do a very crisp and clean job, and there are some deeper crevices that deserve deeper attention. But I want to get that all cut out of the way before I add on to my highlights. And next up, I have a lot of blending to do. Smoothing out any ripples left over from wet blending, thin mixtures of buff and German uniform to highlight, while mixtures of dark Prussian blue and German uniform are used to shade, adding a little bit of a blue tone, creating colder shadows. This is what we're after. I'll also add black to that deeper mixture where appropriate. I still have further to go with the highlights, but this establishes my shadows. Further into the endless landscape of blending, with the low end established, I started adding more buff to the German uniform. I can start pulling in some edge highlights as well. Wherever appropriate, I have the blade in my hand, why not continue to slice that pie I was referencing earlier? I'm uh, just taking my time and laying many layers in place for maximum saturation. My portions are set, so now I'm reducing the coverage in smaller and smaller amounts. I often describe this, you want to imagine something uh, like a topographical map. As the peaks rise up, it becomes smaller and smaller in portion, and it changes in colors, sometimes for the best. Other times, chaos reigns but this is a good mental image for your portion control. And yes, that was a big step. It took a lot more time than the uh, video may imply. This was hours, but it's worth it. The better something looks, the more it will stand the test of time. You look back on it with a fondness instead of a curved Elvis lip of disgrace. So now that that main green is nearly established, I picked out some decals. You know the score, we've all seen Vince's tutorial, and if you haven't, then hit the space bar, pause, check out Vince's tutorial. But basically, the rundown is this, microsol to loosen the decal from the paper, and then microset to soften and adhere the decal. This will help to melt that little graphic down. Following that, throw down some gloss varnish to cover the seams. Think of it like this, gloss varnish is thick, there's a thin seam of paper. By laying the gloss varnish over that paper and the surface that is on top of, it will create a very microscopic half pipe for tiny skateboards, undetectable to the human eye once you then go and apply a layer of matte varnish. And then once it was all dry and set, I layered some of the green tones over the decals to bring everything back together. Um, you want to make the, the decal or your freehand look like it's part of the surface, so just some thin layers of paint to kind of tone things in that direction. It just helps to bond these graphics to the surface and make it look like it's 
part of the machine instead of just something that fell on top of it. We'll talk a little bit about that more as we get on further in the steps. And now is that time. Time for a little battle damage. Tapping some of my deepest tone in place with a shred of sponge. I'll add some slashes with the brush as well. And while I'm doing brush work, I'll place more superficial damage on the decals. It helps to make the layers look like they're chipped away a little bit, like uh, you've got the red triangle with the skull on top of it, taking a little bit of red paint, making it look like the white paint is chipped off. Those little superficial kind of scratches and dents have some of that eating into the decal at various levels. It all makes everything come together in perfect harmony. Perfect harmony. Things are looking good, at least in my eyes, but sure thing is, a man does not know the wickedness of his own sons, nor the failure of his crops that are about to secede into the soil. Fingers crossed. So at this awkward teenage stage, it was time for some defining and turn this model into a full adult. Edge highlights were brought up with that lightest mixture of German uniform, remember that's German uniform and buff again. And then once I got to a certain level of brightness, I added a little bit of white into that mixture. I never went to full maximum white on this piece, I'll save that for the very end, but always working in off tones. Um, I'll also be painting in a neutral gray on any of those bits of damage. If, if the damage is wide enough, just put a little kind of deep gray in there, representing the unpolished steel beneath the paint and then defining those lower edges with the same progression. You want to pull out that lower lip of the battle damage to make it appear almost like a blister. You want it to be hanging out, you know, it creates, it adds a little bit more of a three-dimensional effect to these paint chips. And as always, I will remind you, feel free to throw some scrapes around. You're doing great. For the vision slits, I mixed dark Prussian blue, green, and white to form an aquamarine sort of color. Then I wet blended white into the downward facing angle and a black and blue mixture for the deeper portion. Then do it again. I'm not Steely Dan, but they know the value of a second wet blended layer. You always go back and do it again. It doesn't look quite so uh, saturated for my taste on one pass. Wet blending is not a finishing technique. It's just a quick way to get a blend going and you can always go back for another pass for maximum saturation which you really want in the case of glass and gems. Follow that up with some diluted mixtures of the appropriate tone, smoothing out any roughness from wet blending and getting a nice blend quickly. See how easily these diluted layers work on top of a wet blended base coat. Then finally, run a shining line along the edges for maximum shine, and now the pilot can fully view the world of descending horrors as far as the visor can see. The parts of the model that you don't paint remain inanimate, but when the model comes to life, you can feel the pain of having both of its feet fastened to a disc. Whoa, somebody call up Ninjan. Hey buddy. It's time to slay the gray. For the weaponry and stone bit, I'll be wet blending mixtures of German gray plus deck tan over a base coat of German gray. It can help to lay down a foundational base coat when you're about to wet blend some areas may be pulled thin. You won't have primer showing anymore. You'll have a more pure tone closer to the target that you're aiming for and landing next to. But following that, I'll sharpen things up with mixtures of the same combination. Just gradually bringing in more deck tan into that German gray and then finally getting up to a pure deck tan. And don't forget that a little bits of battle damage on these surfaces too. The stone is a little bit different. I'm stippling things in place to create more of a concrete, porous cement texture. But yeah, consider the gray slain. The ammo crate. Somebody is really missing their bullets. This is the part of the project where the main feature is pretty well nursed to life, but I have all these other details that I care less about, but going into a contest, you want to uh, remain patient and just render everything to its potential, so give every item equal attention. Taking from the colors already on my palette, I made a base coat from black and flat earth, then wet blended a mixture of flat earth and ice yellow into place. This gave me a murky mix of all three tones. I'll add ice yellow to that highlight just to keep pushing it along. 
I'll also use the same combos to conjure up some of that sweet Cadian khaki for that discarded sleeve. Someone's no, he did not lose part of his shirt, the whole arm came with it. Thanks, Angron. Blood is cool. Blood is cool. War is hammer. Speaking on that severed arm though, pulling from my palette soup, I added hull red to the flat earth and buff mixture. Adding more ice yellow to that mixture, I gradually lifted things up to create my highlights. Makes a nice flesh tone. I know, a whole base and he skips the hand. No, I did not forget that part. Brief, but that little hand tells a story. Finally now, some carefully placed streaks. I'll add variously diluted mixtures of flat earth and just vertical striations. Play with the overlapping transparencies here and let them slowly build. The dirty paint water amount of paint combining with the slightly more saturated mixtures, once that all starts crossing over you have a lot of uh, kind of random textures occurring, you know, just let it kind of do its thing and it'll look uh, most dirty. Okay, that'll do for now. 32 steps later. <laughs> this is a lengthy amount of clips to compile, but I'm really happy with the result. You know, taking that little bit of extra time, you know, I'd let a, a night roll over. Um, I still have more ideas, like I need to build the base up around where his feet are touching down. I may sculpt some flames in place to help with that, but there are no short measures on this project, you know? I, I'll build up the dirt later on when I finally attach the model and I have to paint some more dirt to match the rest of it. Well, I can follow my own tutorial. I'm also looking at the dirt, thinking it needs some weathering powder, and you know what? Why don't we just go ahead and add some weathering powder? I'll just be using this uh, kind of mid-brown from Secret Weapon and dusting it in with a little dry brush from Army Painter. I want the tones to still show through, but I appreciate the variety of texture that weathering powder brings into place. You know, that's, that's part of the composition as I see it, is a variety of materials. But yeah, there you have it, an interesting base that... I'm growing to appreciate bases just on their own, like... I mean, something like this. Um, maybe you've seen the Beast Snaga's unit I've been working on. We'll, we'll get to that later if you haven't, but... The base itself could be a piece, you know, this is a dis this is my sentinel entry, right? It's dead. Um, I just, I like the, the kind of lifeless side of scale modeling and just meticulously detailing bases and, you know, they take on their own, of course, like scenic properties, but I think I'll do something like that in the future, you know, make something to display nothing. So, like and subscribe if you look forward to nothingness. I want to thank my patrons for supporting me on this journey as well, because it is certainly that, having just come back from the Nova Open and attending Adepticon earlier this year, detailing that out, especially on Patreon for everyone. Um, yeah, thank you all so much for supporting me on this and coming along. I appreciate you appreciating. So, until we meet again online, I'll be seeing you.